Regardless of whether you're learning software development or you already have experience, it is natural to start preparing for coding interviews because this is how you can choose between multiple opportunities instead of just accepting what comes your way. Not too long ago, there was a blog post that I saw which went viral and the infrastructure of the hosting of the blog went completely down because so many people were searching for it. This post was about senior software developers getting rejected in the masses. The conclusion is that from the perspective of the employer, there is no better mainstream choice yet to filter between applicants. And for this reason, unless you want to start a business, your best option is if you start practicing these coding interview questions because sooner or later you will face some of these interview questions. There is an excellent tool that can not only install the basics in your mind, but it can also help you get started with a habit for practicing coding interviews. So this tool is HackerRank. Whenever you register a new account with HackerRank, you get presented an option to join a 30-day coding challenge. And this coding challenge will walk you through some basic training on understanding code written by other people, as well as writing your own on top. So you can see this 30 days challenge. We start with day zero and we end with day 29. Obviously they start with zero because we're in computer science. These challenges are getting more and more complex, but you can see that the completion rates stay quite high because many people get eliminated on day, day zero, day one, day two, because they just don't follow up the habit. You should not be one of them, obviously, because if you continue practicing your skills, you will improve. Let's select day zero, hello world. This is an obvious question where you print hello world and you also print the input. The solution is already written here. You can see that we can select any languages that we want. In this case, this is a JavaScript channel, so we selected JavaScript initially. The solution is quite simple. You just console log hello world and the input, it's already written in there. But obviously, if you write it yourself, you will see how this develops. You can also test it and if the basic test passes, you can submit your code. It's straightforward. Then you can see your results, the feedback, and the congratulation message so that you stay engaged and continue with the next task. You can also select other languages. You can see that there are a lot of programming languages available. For instance, we could select Python 3. Even without Python knowledge, you can see that uh, it's quite simple to solve this exercise. You just write print and you paste the input string in there, the variable, and if you run the code, how surprising it works. Let's select a slightly more complex exercise for the sake of uh, continuing with the demo. For example, there is a day 22 binary search trees. Let's see what we need to do. There is an input of uh, integers. The first integer contains the number of integers and the rest are elements of a binary search tree. And it's built in a way that the first value is going to be the root. So in our case, it's the number three. And if the next value is smaller, it's going to be inserted on its left. And if it's larger, it's going to be inserted on its right. So this is how we build the binary search tree. You can see how the different values eventually construct the binary tree. Now, our objective is to figure out the height of the binary tree. And the height is defined as the number of arrows between the root and the longest path. So this is the exercise. By the way, this is still a very easy exercise. So uh, you will be able to uh, solve it yourself. I said in the introduction that we have to understand other people's code in order to be able to solve this exercise or solve some hacker rank exercises. Here you can see that uh, actually everything is written. We have a binary search tree constructor and we also have the node data structure defined that has a data, a left and a right property. And the building, the insertion of the data, everything is written in here. You can see all we need to know is that there is a this.data, this.left, this.right. And the method itself that we are calling this getHeight method is also available 
inside any node of the binary search tree. So this is a so-called recursive definition where we define the data structure in terms of itself. Our idea is going to be the following. Just look at this binary tree. The height of the tree equals the number of edges from the root and the node that is the farthest from the root, right? Given the recursive structure that we already discussed, the height of a tree that just contains a root node is zero because there are no edges and the left and the right nodes are both null. And the height of a generic tree equals the maximum of two values. We just calculate the height of the left subtree of the tree and calculate the height of the right subtree of the tree and we take the maximum out of the two and just add one. Where is the plus one coming from? It's coming from the edge that is pointing from the root to the left subtree or the edge pointing from the root to the right subtree. This is a recursive definition because we're defining this solution in terms of itself because what we need to do is to get the height of the whole tree you need to calculate the height of the left subtree you need to calculate the height of the right subtree and just add one this is a typical solution in binary trees so feel free to use this thought process whenever you have a similar exercise so given that the input is already processed automatically, all we need to do is define the return value of this get height method. The exit condition is going to be defined in the following way. If root is null, then we will return the value minus one. Why is that? Think about it. Here you can see the example where we have a height of three. It contains four nodes, right? And the height is the number of edges, you can see it in red. If we just have a root, for example, this number three and nothing else, then the height is zero. But it's possible that we get to a state where the root itself is null, which means that we don't even have a root. That's when we return one lower, so one number lower than if we had a root. And this way we get the value minus one. So this is how I got this minus one result. And if we don't meet this exit condition, then we have to return the maximum of two values. We just calculate the height of the left subtree of the tree and calculate the height of the right subtree of the tree. And we take the maximum out of the two, obviously adding one to this value. So this way the result is going to be this.getHeight root.left plus one and this.getHeight root.right and plus one. We could take the plus one outside this math.max because uh, it's also a possibility to just uh, factor it out. But either way, it doesn't really matter how we, uh, how we formulate this expression. We get this uh, maximum value. And you can see that this this dot get height is called recursively on different nodes and eventually we will reach a node where we have a left and a right subnode with uh, nulls in that case we will have a minus one return value because of the exit condition and we just cancel out the minus one and the plus one and just return zero Whenever we solve something recursively, it's very important that we need an exit condition. So we have to know when to terminate the recursion, because if we don't terminate the recursion, we will just create an infinite structure where we just call a new function each and every time and we never end it, at least until we get the famous stack overflow error. Whenever you finish writing an exercise, the next step is to run your code on the example tests. You can see that it's working and you can also add some custom input, by the way. So here is the custom input. For example, you can have a tree with one node and the value five. The return value for it is zero because the height is zero. I don't know if the zero is a valid input, but if it was, then the return value based on our assumption would be minus one. 
I'm not sure if this is a valid test case, either way we will find it out during the submission. Because the task itself doesn't define what happens if the first value is zero. That's a loophole, by the way, in this task. But think about it, sometimes you have unspecified tasks anyway in software development. So if you get this in a tech interview, what you need to do is point it out and discuss it with your interviewer. Now let's submit the code. You can see that all test cases are passing and we got the correct result. This is a thought process that you need to go through normally when solving an exercise. I encourage you to sign up for HackerRank. It's free of charge. You can use it, you can rank up. You can even compete with other software developers, which is a lot of fun. And just think about it. Some recruiters are looking for software developers who rank high in some of the competitions and you can get hired very easily by just using HackerRank and playing with it, having fun. I hope this video was interesting to you. If you get stuck solving any exercises, let me know. I might create a video out of it. Good luck with solving HackerRank challenges.